Uh, I'm very curious to see what he brings. I'm very curious to see how it all kind of plays out. Well, you've got experience now. You've played an RRT, so you've played like what four Prime Nexus games already. I played. I have played, played six Prime Nexus games in total. In total, but three just yesterday at an RTT. Right. You know, the, the whole thing's going to take a, a bunch of time. Do you right. know what I mean? To really like, master the ins and outs of it. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to have a leg up on you and Mike, though. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it. Like <laughs> if I'm if I'm yeah, being yeah, honest, right. like usually oh. I have a leg up, but oh, yeah. like this time. Like, I feel like I really do, so I'm going to take it easy on you mm. boys for a little oh, while. Oh, please, yeah, please do. And you've got to make four-inch charges. Oh, I mean, those man. are impossible. You know I'm failing those. Uh, you know I'm, yeah. <laughs> if there's a four-inch charge, you know you're going to fail it. I didn't save my CP for <laughs> no, a reroll. Oh, no. Oh, God. Actually, at the RTT, uh, absolutely a squad of those eight bound from World Leaders failed a four-inch charge. Ooh, and they had a plus one to charge. That hurts. And he used a CP to get a greedy charge with Angron and failed. Mm. So he's like, I gotta make a nine-inch charge with Angron to get to the the big angry unit in the back. So he, and he there was a unit that was like three inches away from him but he was like, no, mm. I'm gonna go <laughs> like swing wide. So he, fa- he swings and fails and he's like, it's not a problem. CP fails. He's like, crap yeah. and then he's like okay i'll take this unit eight bound four inch charge and then he's like snake eyes i mean that's where <laughs> that's where their close combat army just completely falls apart falls apart yeah. he was like oh my god he made no charges yeah. in his second turn with angron and a bunch of dudes just standing in front of my imperial fist gun line that's bad that's what to be <laughs> that's what to be very bad everyone stood still and everyone shot <laughs> just he was like, oh, killed Angron, killed a bunch of dudes. It was great. Well, what I did find really interesting is that a lot of the people that watch our videos aren't yet subscribed. And I think that they have got to subscribe. We need to see it. We need to see more of it. I'm not going to fail my four-inch charge on you. Never. No. Subscribe to our videos. Never fail four-inch charges ever again. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, that's how yeah, it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. So please mm-hmm. like, subscribe, comment about a time that you failed a wildly easy charge comment section just like explodes yeah. <laughs> just wailing like, oh, no. yeah. it's mostly you and me just <laughs> typing back and forth <laughs> something that i observe from my time at this rtt and really getting like you know intimately acquainted with the prior nexus deck mm-hmm. uh is that the secondaries are really different like i thought they were like, of course, a little different. You got to do different things. And I kind of, like, I rolled my way through it a little bit. Was like, all right, whatever. It'll be effectively the same. It is not the same. Hmm. And you, like, not only do I think that this is going to seriously affect list design, it is, it's going to seriously affect the way people play, um, but something that you, like, really need to get a handle on is that there's there is, like, a good handful of all the secondary mission cards that don't score as much as they used to. Yeah, that's one right? thing that we've been talking about is it, it, a lot of things that have gone from you would score five is now you would score four. Yeah. You would score three to five. Now you score two to four. Or you have yeah. to do really interesting and very difficult things to get six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a very huge change. What I found is that not only did I need to be in like difficult positions to accomplish these secondaries i needed to do more things for longer to accomplish these secondaries right yeah a bunch of them carry on to the next through the next turn yeah totally i and on top of that even if i were to max out that secondary score it still isn't just as good as being on more objectives for the primary right because depending on what mission you're on if the primary is scoring you like five or or four plus an extra of some sort right it's more reliable to just try and grind the primaries it becomes really difficult to accomplish the secondaries and i kind of want to talk about like you know what you kind of should be prepared for when you're thinking to yourself i'm going to play a prime nexus game and i'm going to try and complete secondaries so still primaries is the primary thing you want to do obviously yes and a lot of the secondaries still kind of play on top of primary exactly but right. tell us some of the more interesting ones that you've run into and how you think we can accomplish them in an easier way 
So a lot of the secondaries uh, now require an action, which they have more fully defined in this season versus Leviathan. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't do things like fall back and do an action. You can't be in engagement range and do an action. You can't advance and do an action, even if you have the assault keyword. Right. Because it has nothing to do with shooting anymore. It's what the unit has accomplished that turn. So are you saying more MSU style list building might be the way to get around the fact that you're going to be sacrificing efficiency for actions? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that the, uh, if your goal is to complete secondaries, my prediction, and, and I could be wrong in the long run, but my prediction is that at first people will try and answer this by going very MSU, mm -hmm. right? Um, little squads of scouts, little squads of jumpers, little squads of this, little squads of that, just to make sure that you have enough um, units to accomplish all the actions that you need. And some of them even require multiple units to complete the same action. Right. So for example, uh, recover assets is a really interesting one. And not only is it wildly wordy and difficult to read, but effectively what recover assets is, is two or more units in your army can start doing it in the shooting phase. And then what happens is on the, your next turn, uh, it will complete and you basically get three points if a unit has completed the action in two of three zones. Your deployment zone, no man's land, and your opponent's deployment zone. Okay. So you get three points if two of the three got basically lit up, right? And you get six points if all three of them do. But... That's three units that do, that do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Or more if you commit heavily to it. Yeah, if you're right? trying to guarantee it going oh. off. Whole, but, but like, it's so difficult to actually accomplish, like, because your opponent gets a turn to respond. Yeah, it completes in your command phase? Uh, at the end of your opponent's next turn. End of opponent's next turn. Yeah, so, so like, the same, yeah. what is that? Like, it's really <laughs> difficult to accomplish. This and does benefit some armies more than others. It though. totally does. Additionally, like, part of the... Part of the problem with it, like when I look at that, is like I almost maybe think that ditching that for a CP farm might actually be better because the payoff isn't that great. You you sacrifice two units and you get three points? Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good uh, a good usage of, of your unit. Especially if you're playing, uh, if you're not going wide with your army and you're playing fairly focused, that, yeah. that really can cripple an, a whole army that's playing yeah. like big, heavy, powerful stuff. Yeah. And you have to hit the mid table and go, yeah, my land raider redeemer is Does it? going to do this. No. Does this make uh, like tactical squad kind of feel a little bit better? Because I feel like they could accomplish a, a tactical squad and a rhino could be all three of these units. It Tax squad be. splits into two fives. One stays in the back. Rhino hits the mid field the other yeah. guys get it get out across the borderline and but then the problem is they have to live yeah right then the problem is they have to live yeah. and so while it could be a great lightning rod for your opponent like you don't get to see if that happens at the end of your turn what takes place there is like they get a whole turn to react and then you're stuck with this card and you have to try and do it again in your next turn or spend a CP to discard it. Mm. It's just not phenomenal. And, so you're, and saying, you're saying in almost all regards, you might want to just toss this one as soon as it comes up? Un unless you're like already winning or you're playing a, a, a type of army that is particularly good at killing, at, like sorry, at doing things like this, Yeah. right? In a world where OC0 stuff doesn't complete actions, this becomes even more difficult, right? Right. And so, like, recover assets, really difficult. Mm -hmm. And probably not worth it. Second, sabotage, also difficult. So what sabotage is, is uh, you have to complete an action while you're, like, wholly within a terrain feature that is either within no man's land or in your opponent's deployment zone. Okay. Right? And then if you complete the action at the end of your opponent's next turn... You get three points in no man's land right. or six points in the deployment zone. Another one that gives your opponent a way to influence how yeah. you're scoring secondary. At least with that one, you get to like hide. Like you could take a unit of, um, like you could take a unit of eliminators, for example. They're easy to hide yeah. and they could infiltrate somewhere and be ready for it. But again, like if you put them with last fusels or something like that and you want to shoot the last fusels, now you can't. And you're sitting there for three points. Yeah. It, and the chances of you getting the six points 
on your opponents, like on a piece of training in your deployments? You'd, ha- you'd have to already be winning by such a high amount. That doesn't matter. Or like maybe you gummed your opponent up in such a in such a vicious way yeah. that they can't do that. And even then, like when you're kind of winning a game, you want to continue to put the pressure on. The last thing you want to do is be like, yeah, these blood letters are going to chill in this piece of terrain and do an action. No. Like, nah, they're probably just going to try to make a wild charge yeah. and, and get more primary, which yeah. is the really important one. And, and a great way to win the game. Yeah. Right? Okay. And, and and it's not just the action-based ones that got more difficult um, or are like score you less. Engage in all fronts and uh, the new deploy teleport homers. Deploy teleport homers became established locus. Right. And instead of it being three and five for the middle and deployments and uh, enemies deployment zone respectfully, now it's two and four. Hmm. It's literally the same thing. You do an action at the end of your turn, you get two or four versus yeah. three or five. Uh, engage in all fronts, the exact same thing. Yeah, it's a little easier to do with engage because you no longer have to have that like three inch bar in between like all of the different which things which is so nice it is a really nice it's uh, so nice y- you just can't be within six inches of the center which i think is totally fine yeah but again two and four hmm. right and so it how much is it really worth the stretch like when i um would take a scout squad and they would scout forward and let's say i drew like you know deploy teleport homers and i run into my opponent's deployment zone right with the little shotgun and i can do it for five points and then definitely lose the scouts right Right, it didn't feel that bad for a big game. Yeah, for a big, yeah, huge gain, right? But now, like, if I'm going to put guys into the middle of the table where they're definitely going to die soon, and I get two points out of it, Mm. nah, no way. Again, it's promoting going wide with going uh, with your army. Yeah, MSU style stuff. It, yeah, because you need to be able to lose stuff, right? Um, and then uh, there's there's other ones that are kind of difficult to manage too, like marked for death. Almost a weird kind of like killing replacement for tempting target. What happens is your opponent chooses three units in their army, right? And then uh, if you kill any of those three units, you get five points, right? And it's not th- it's not five each. It's if one or more of those units die, you get five. Okay. Okay. Yep. The thing is, is like you. If your opponent goes, oh, uh, this assassin that has lone op and is sitting at the back of the board. Okay. And then this tech marine that's yeah. sitting at the back of the board with lone op. Right. Right. And then Goleman. Yeah. With yeah, lone op. Yeah. And then says go. Right. You go, oh, mm. never mind. I won't kill them. Right. And then they're like, okay, cool. <laughs> right. Like it, it, it just it, makes it. Yeah. There's a, a steeper hill to climb to get these things accomplished and there's less of a payoff for accomplishing them yeah there is less of a payoff for accomplishing them and and uh mark for death almost feels like one you want to get when you're already winning the game yeah because then your opponent has fewer choices to pick it's like one you want to get late game yeah but you have no control you might get it if you get it first turn you just go okay whatever yeah i'm getting rid of that right so do anything about it it you know the it what it made me realize is that I have to not play pr- secondaries the same way. Because in, in Leviathan, if you threw a unit away to score five points, awesome. Yeah. Right? Because that unit is totally worth five points. Mm-hmm. Right? It's like they were standing on a new objective. Right? Right, yeah. And especially depending on what that unit is, you could be like, oh, they're 40 points with a Gretchen. Yeah, but exactly. they just got me right? five. Exactly. Where now... Am I going to throw away this, you know, 100-point unit for two points? Mm. No. I, I don't think you do. I, I think you let it ride, right? And and you try and beat your opponent out on primary, and you try and do more, you know, uh, primary-based actions or safer secondaries because there's lots of them here that almost trick you into overextending. And when you do that, like, you know, there's lots of things in the Prion Nexus uh, tournament pack that has changed quite a bit like the layouts are all a lot different the missions are all a lot different like for example in the previous mission pack leviathan a primary mission very often was like control an objective get five points control an objective get five points and then control another objective for another five points mm-hmm. right where now what happens is it's like control your home for three right and one of the other ones for five or control both or, or control any objectives for four and then do actions to make up the extra right and so not only are the secondaries asking you to do more actions but the primaries are asking you to do more actions too okay right and so i think your assessment of msu 
is kind of the way to go, at least right now until something different kind of surfaces. Until we get enough experience with it to potentially yeah. dial that comment back. But yeah. it feels like a bunch of five-man units is probably what you're going to want to take. Totally, right? Um, but then also, like, you know, the, the, the layouts have drastically changed. And in every layout that I played... All of them, like, favored hardcore shooters, hmm. right? So, like, I played two tower armies back-to-back, ruthless games, yeah. right? And so it they were, I was like, oh, man, there's nowhere to hide. Hmm. Like, nowhere to hide. At least once you get into the position you need to be to complete the secondaries, then you're out in the open and there's nowhere to hide. Yeah, you almost have to sacrifice Or even stuff. stand it on primaries. Right. Or, yeah. like, well... Like, like the game I played against, against Mitch, who's standing in that room over there, and you even look down, you're like, holy smokes, there's nothing around that center yeah, objective. Yeah, the whole it center was objective like, was open. Yeah, it was just like the center objective, and then there was a good, like, six inches from there before you saw any terrain, yeah. which means that, like, most most of your infantry is not even making it from one side to the other, yeah. like, in a single turn. It's going to be brutal to watch them try to slog across, and they're just yeah. going to be open in the in the kill pits. Exactly, Taking right? shots. So, you know, maybe going wide is the way to go. Maybe going, you know, ultra tough kind of death starry is the way to go because things are so open. Right. Maybe going just pure gun lines is the way to go. It's hard. It's too early to say. But I would love to know what you think. If you played some games of Prion Nexus, if you played on the new layouts with the new missions and rules, and in particular with the new secondaries, tell me what you think about these secondaries. How do you think would be the best way to accomplish them? From all of us here at Hyperspace Hobbies, this is Ian, and I am Steve, and we are saying goodbye until next time.